Okay, so it's now uh, the second round of actions, and all unaware U.S. soldiers get to make an activation check. Anderson, perception 9, gets a 0, so he is aware. Um, okay, um, what's his name? Cheng gets a 6. He's got a perception of 6, so he is aware. Uh, D, Davis, perception of 2. He's clueless. Uh, Bastinelli, a four, and he's got a perception of nine, so he is aware. Uh, H, perception of one, is not aware. Fordson, an eight, he is not aware. He had a perception of four. And Gopher, a zero. With a perception of one, Gopher somehow wakes up and notices that something is happening. Okay. So that's the situation. So we have some people aware and some not. And now we will roll for an event. And the event roll is nine and uh, four and five is nine. So we're in event nine. And that is in event nine, five seventy eight. 578 says if S2 has not occurred, C737, but S2 has occurred. So if S0 and S5 have occurred and S5 has not, go to condition 4. Ooh, we could have had to move up to condition 4, but luckily S5 hasn't occurred, so we have no event. Okay. So now we're rolling to see who will get advantage this round and what everybody's initiative number will be. Germans are black. Germans get an 8 and the Allies get a 2. Well, that's not so good. So Allies with a 2 and the disadvantage. Possible panic for Chang. Best Nelly up here with a 2. Uh, and Gopher with a 2. Well, the only guy who might panic is Cheng, but Cheng is right next to Bastinelli, and Cheng has an initiative of four, and Bastinelli gives him another three, so everything's fine there. Okay, our unaware guys obviously don't get any rounds, and then the Germans are on eight, so this one will be getting two rounds, and this one will be getting one. Oh, but I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong things. Eight in the good side puts them there. So the first German to act will be you, and unfortunately for us, you has line of sight to Bastinelli. In fact, he has line of sight to these guys as well, because um, there's no crest or anything. It's a gentle sloped hill. Oh, this is this is not good. So you, uh, we roll for a German action number for this turn, since some Germans can act. We get a, a 2. So you, with a 2, does 9.15. And 9.15 says... The back of U.S. soldier in sight, C-801. Okay, 801 says... Crouch, conduct best fire at easiest target, fall prone after fire, free stance change available. So great, he's going to shoot at me and then fall prone. Okay, so we have you here at a range of two, and you is armed with a rifle. Okay, and he's got a weapon skill of minus one. So he's obviously at short range, which starts him out with a five. Uh, minus one is a four, and I am crouching in the open. So a four he needs. So roll to see if he jams. He does not. Now rolling a 0 through 4 for a hit. Oh, he hits Bastinelli. No, Bastinelli's one of my favorite guys. And how does he roll? A 2. Ooh, this might not be so bad for us. Bolt action rifle with a 2 is... Oh, I thought he was going to panic me, but he wounded me. Oh, Bastinelli's been wounded. So Bastinelli's wounded, drops prone, and won't get to act this turn. Oh, that's painful. 
Okay, so that's his action, his first action. Bassinelli will not get an action. And Chang has to save the day. Well, the good news is, is Chang does have line of sight on, um, on this guy. Unfortunately, he's prone in the woods. So that's, that's bad for us. So I'm not sure if he should try to take a shot or not at a guy who's prone in the woods. Um, does Chang have any... Chang's got the bazooka, right? Ooh, so I could do something. I could use that. Um, oh, okay, we need to look and see what we're going to do. Okay, so Chang is going to throw a grenade. I took a look at him firing, and firing a guy who's prone in the woods, you get a minus four to hit. So he would have had a, seven, a zero through three to hit. But if he throws a grenade, it's a medium range for throwing a grenade outdoors. So he'd start with a four, plus two for his weapon skill is six, and he has no minuses because you don't take the guy's terrain into account uh, except for non-adjacent apertures. So he's got a six to hit with the grenade. So zero through six, first we roll for a dud, 5% chance of a dud is a 19, that is not. Rolling to hit with the grenade. Oh, oh, a nine. Well, there's one little thing that, though, we have a scatter. When you throw a grenade and you miss, the grenade ends up somewhere. So we need to find the rules for grenade scatter. Uh, to determine where it lands, consult the following diagram. Okay, so use diagram A. Roll one die, determine the hex it lands in. Nope, it's not, okay. All right, it will still damage soldiers in the hex it lands in. So uh, what we do is, um, Let's see, direction of throw. Okay, so here's the grenade scatter diagram. I'm trying to kind of line it up with the way we're throwing it. So starting from here, um, it's, oh, actually, yeah, so it doesn't quite bisect. So it's gonna use this. And if it gets a four, it will land where the other German M is. So we're rolling and we get a one. So the grenade ends up over here and goes off and no effect. So Chang can have a free stance change so he's gonna drop prone, at least get himself some cover here. And he's still got the bazooka. And then we have Fordson who is not prone. All right, so that was Chang. So now both Germans get around. So first we have to deal with M. And we roll a new action number for this, since the Germans are getting a new second turn. And then we get a three. Okay, German action number three. German M does 803. Which says, if active target visible, no, he can't, oh, no, he can't see anybody because M is right behind those bushes, uh, those th those trees. So M can't see anybody. So if no active target visible, run into open, crawl into any other type of hex. Crap, he's going to crawl into this hex. We already know that because that's exactly what the other guy did. So now we're over, so that takes care of M. Now we have to do U, who is prone. So M has acted, and now U. So U with a three we'll do 803 and if active target visible and he is not in an open hex crouch conduct best fire at easiest target fall prone and free stand chains available so the good news is is he's he kind of crouches back up a bit Got both germans there the bad news is is he's going to shoot uh again at bassinelli so range of two gives him a five um Let's see, let's roll the CB James. He does not. So he gets a five, minus one for his crappy weapon skill. And Bassinelli is now prone in the open. 
uh, which is a little bit better. So that's another minus one there. So that's uh, five, four, three. So zero through three for you to hit. Come on, miss, please miss. Yes, he misses. Whew. Okay. So Bastinelli dodges that one. Okay, so now it's our turn. What are we going to do? We've got A, C, and G who can act. Well, G can't even see anybody. A could give G another round. So that might be interesting. The problem is these guys, where they're at, is not very convenient for G to uh, shoot them. And he needs to get fairly close to even do anything. Um, well, actually, if he stays on the road, if he was to move to here, for example, oh no, he'd be blocked by this woods right in front of them. He could see over these woods. He could see, if he moved here, he could see over this, these forests, but this woods would block him. So in order to get a shot, uh, does G have a grenade? No, because if he had a grenade, you know, he could have thrown it into this hex and, you know, maybe both of those guys would have been injured. Uh, so in order to get a shot, and what's his movement allowance? Three. So i got to think about what G's going to do here. Okay, I've decided to have Chang fire first, and he's going to fire the bazooka. So we will use up his action here. The reason is, is because he's got the same odds of hitting with the bazooka or a regular uh, gun at this range. And if the bazooka does hit, it will affect both of the guys in the hex. So he has to roll a 7 minus 3 for crouched in the woods. It's really a 5 plus 2 for his weapon skill, and then minus 3. So he's got to roll a... Uh, zero through four to hit that hex with the bazooka. Uh, first rolling for a dud. It is not a dud. Now rolling to hit. Come on, Chang, save the day. Yes, he does it. He did it. Fantastic. Okay, so the way the bazooka works is we get to target the one soldier and we use this column here on him. And I'm going to target the German with the machine pistol. So we roll to see how much damage we did, and we get a 3, which is a kill. Yeah. And then, on the other guy, we use the grenade inside column for damage, and that will be this one here. We roll, and we get a 7, which is incapacitated. Fantastic! We did it! We did it! So you... Uh, no, M had the machine pistol, so M is killed, and U is incapacitated. Great job, Chang. You did it. That's fantastic. Okay, just to finish out the round, uh, we really don't have to do anything in particular. We'll just go ahead and let these guys do nothing and let rounds end. So we'll be now going back to normal... Um, operations. Okay, and as I uh, moved on to go back into operations, I checked the total of victory points. We picked up two more victory points for the Germans we just killed, and six points for destroying that bunker, and we now have 13 victory points, and 12 victory points is enough for the U.S. to win this scenario. Uh, we at this point, uh, basically can call this a wrap. Um, my men would exit off the map basically the same way they came in and bringing out the incapacitated body of Eaton in the canoe and we know we made it back into the canoe with him. So at this point uh, we're going to consider this mission, this ambush mission complete. Um, obviously I could have continued to explore the map, uh, try to get some additional victory points, but uh, in this game the victory points don't really matter. As long as you get enough to win the mission, then your goal is basically to try to get out of there with your guys still alive and in good health uh, to take on the next mission. And at this point there's no real upside for me to stay in here and uh, get more of my guys injured or killed. So. Uh, as in the real uh, world, I think, uh, when you've achieved your mission, you can stop. You don't have to keep going until you're all dead. 
So uh, I will uh, double check to make sure that I can get off the map without triggering any other events, but I think I've been through all the relevant hexes uh, at this condition level to be able to get my guys off the map. So uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy this. Uh, at this point, I will be, uh, once I complete the mission, I'm then able to allocate uh, basically experience points that my men get um, to uh, try to uh, roll and increase their stats and so forth. I'm not going to include that part uh, in the video series, um, but uh, you know, generally you're able to make rolls for the guys to try to see if you're lucky enough that some of their stats go up. And one thing I didn't mention that's kind of maybe important here, and I do need to add to this, is as you're playing, they encourage you to use these CPs area, which is supposed to stand for, I think, uh, command points or uh, combat points, to make a note of when the particular soldier did something particularly heroic or important for the success of the mission. And then when you allocate the experience points, you basically do it proportional to how many, you know, to what the person actually did. So the person who was the real hero of the mission tends to gain the most experience, which makes, I think, a nice thematic touch. So I've been writing who killed which Germans and so forth down, and I'll be using that uh, to uh, complete my uh, scoring. I just need to add on here this last bit about Cheng uh, disabling those two Germans with the bazooka shot, which was quite a crucial play, so he'll get a big, I'll probably give him more than one bonus point for that, or certainly, for one thing, you know, usually you give one point per German that you took out. But in this case, I think it was even more critical since he saved potentially a lot of casualties there. All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and I hope you really enjoyed it.